Okay, listen up. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd. So, I want to talk about a hadith. I think that many of you should have heard this hadith, at least part of the hadith, a very famous uh, part of the hadith, which tells us about the importance of sharing knowledge, about sharing knowledge, about seeking knowledge and sharing knowledge, as we're going to talk, as we're going to discuss. And in this hadith, this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. So, وعن عبد الله بن عمرو بن عاص رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بلغ عني ولو آية وحدث عن بني إسرائيل ولا حرج ومن كذب علي متعمدا فليتبوأ مقعده من النار رواه بخاري وأحمد so in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said or he narrated that uh, uh, on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Balagha anni wa lo ayah," means to share a hadith about me, even if it is just a verse. Or even if, if it is something small, that you should share something about Islam, even if it's just one ayah, even if it's just one verse of a surah or a chapter of the Quran. And he said, and you can relate the tales about Bani Israel, and there is no problem with that. And this has to do with meaning that you could give stories that the children of Israel stories that were collected, if they're proven to be stories that are truthful, you know, that they correspond with hadith literature that's sahih, or they correspond with uh, ayats in the Quran, then you, it's no problem if you, if you relate that. For example, some people, they use the Bible to prove a point. Some of the things in the Bible agree with Islam. So no problem if that if that thing in the Bible that you're talking about, maybe you're giving dawah to a Christian or something like this, and you use the Bible to prove a point because that point is the same point in Islam, then that's okay. It's okay if it's something proven that it uh, relates to Islam. You know, it corresponds with Islam or correlates with Islam. It's correct as and uh, it's proven correct by Islam. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, And whoever lies about me intentionally, then let them take their seat in the hellfire. So that shows us that we have to be careful whenever we talk about Islam. And whenever we relate something about the Prophet ﷺ, we have to be very careful not to lie. Don't say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ said, and you don't even know. You don't know anything about a hadith, about this subject, and you just make it up, or you just say it jokingly. Never do that. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever lies about me intentionally, then let him take his seat in the hellfire. So that also shows us to be careful and that we should look at authentic hadith. You know, hadith that has been proven by the muhaddithin, the, the hadith scholars, to know whether something is sahih or not sahih. You know, if it's uh, sound, authentic, or inauthentic, or unauthentic. Okay? So we have to be careful what we say about Islam. If you don't know, if you don't know it from the Quran, and you don't know it from the Sunnah, then be careful and cautious when you talk about things related to the religion. What we learn from this hadith, there's many benefits, but we'll just stick to the ones that I wrote on the board. The first thing, Ismail, can you read for this first one? What does it say? Obligation to seek knowledge about Islam. Ascent. So that it's an, from this hadith, we learn that it's an obligation to seek knowledge about Islam. Follow the ilm, just like you guys are doing. You guys are in this class, but you're also here in the duqsida. You know, you're learning the Quran. And Bilal, of course, would always pay attention as a good student. So 
Yeah. So he, he's learning too, mashallah, tabarakallah. So it shows us that it's an obligation to seek knowledge about Islam. And to share that knowledge too. To the extent of your ability, of course. Also, another benefit is, can you read for me, um, um, Mahmoud, Nam? Michael. Mahmoud. It is Faraj al-Kifaya. Kif Kifaya. Kifaya. Uh -huh. Islam seek knowledge about more complicated issues than the rest of the people do not have to know. Have to. Okay, good. So also another benefit that the scholars mention with this hadith is that seeking the knowledge, there are some things that are an obligation that they say fard al which means that everybody in the community, all the Muslims need to do that duty. So everyone needs to know about what? Tahara. Everybody needs to know about Salat. Everybody needs to know about Aqidah, you know, the belief, the correct belief about Tawheed. Yeah, you need to know about Tawheed, meaning the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things you have to. The Quran, the Quran, as far as memorizing the Quran, that is not Fardul Ain. Everyone does not have to do that. All the Muslims do not have to memorize the Quran. What you need to memorize from the Quran, you, every Muslim needs to know how to read Surah Al Fatiha to make their Salat correct. And that, that is for sure. You need to know, every Muslim needs to know as far as the Quran, they need to know Surah Al Fatiha. That's without a doubt. Yeah, and, and they should know some, you know, another Surah. But as far as memorizing, even Jews Amma, that's not a, a, an obligation. On everyone, no, not even when it has to do that. You should, because you need to know the evidences from the Quran. But it is not an obligation upon you. Meaning that if some people, listen, Ibrahim, if some people do it in the community, as long as there are some hufad, there are some people who have memorized the Quran in your community, then the rest of the people don't get sin for that. So there is some knowledge that Abdul Salam, of course, is paying attention to. There is some knowledge. That is Fardul Ain, which means what, Musa? Fardul Ain? Everyone has to know. Fardul Kifaya means that not everyone needs to know it. That means some people need to know it in the community, and if they know it, then the other then the other people don't get sent for it. Wait, so if I'm the only one in my family. If you're the only one in your family who's memorized the whole Quran, and the rest don't have to. Yeah, they don't have to. It has to be a family? And it doesn't, no, it doesn't have to be the family. But listen, 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 for example, let me give you a better example. Mahmoud, listen, listen. A better example, if we come to the masjid, for example. MashaAllah, in this masjid, uh, uh, Muhammad Farah, in this masjid, we have many hufad, we have many people who have memorized the whole Quran, alhamdulillah. So, as far as to be able to lead the prayer and, and teach the Quran and things like this, we have people who have f fulfilled the Fard al-Kifaya. You know, that somebody amongst us knows how, knows the whole Qur'an. So everyone doesn't have to. We're talking about being an obligation. Everyone doesn't have to. Okay? Everybody doesn't have to memorize the Qur'an. And the fact that you guys memorize the Qur'an, and if you memorize the whole Qur'an, bi'idhnillah, and you can lead the Salat, you know something from the Sunnah and so forth, and you know how to pray properly, then maybe you guys in the future will be leading communities, other communities. Maybe here or maybe around the world. Maybe you'll go out. Musa memorized and we send him here. So-and-so goes to Kenya. So-and-so goes to Somalia. So-and-so goes to Yemen or whatever. And, and you will be maybe an imam because you have done the Fard al-Kifaya. You did that extra seeking of the knowledge and you learned something that is not an obligation upon everyone. So as long as you as an individual have this certain knowledge or do this certain action in Islam, then it is not an obligation on the rest. And I'll give you another example. Hold on. Another example, Abdul Salam, of the Fard al-Kifaya. For example, Salat al-Janazah. Every time someone dies, do, you, do we all have to pray? No. No. But it's Fard al-Kifaya. means that some people, as long as some... Some of the Muslims do it, then no one else gets sin. But if a Muslim dies and no one prays over him, and they and they know about this, then we all get sin. Yeah. 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 So so 
You have to listen because it's an obligation on the Muslims to carry out that duty. No, at least the, for sure the people in that locality will get sin. Why? Because they did not do the fard al fard al kifaya. That was an obligation that at least some of the Muslims have to do. But every time someone dies here in Seattle, for example, the whole Seattle community doesn't have to pray over him, no, him or her. But as long as some people, even if it's just two, or even if it's one, as long as someone prays over him, then the rest don't get sin. Then they, they did the fard al kifaya. Fard al ayn means everyone has to do it. So if it's another example like the, the seeking the knowledge about Tawheed, everyone has to do it. Yeah, hold on, let me let me finish this hadith first. Okay, so then that was a little bit about Fard al Kifaya and related to this about seeking the knowledge. So some of the knowledge is Fard al Ain, meaning everyone has to know, like Tawheed and Salat and so forth. And some of it is Fard al Kifaya, as long as some people in the community know it, then the rest do not get sin or is not obligation upon them. The last thing, uh, Abdul Salam, is what? Read number three for me. Lying about the Good. So lying about the Prophet Sallallahu or something in Islam or lying about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this is one of the biggest sins you could do. Never say, oh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just because you get in a debate with somebody and you argue and you don't know if they, if you, you don't know if they, if it's true or not, don't, you know, be careful about what you say. Never say something if you don't know some, you know, where the evidence is or know something, some evidence for it. Tayyib, because that's a major sin to speak about Allah, to lie about Allah or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the fourth thing, read for me, Bilal. Huh? Sharing knowledge and knowledge about Islam and Islam and Islam and Islam and Good. So sharing knowledge about Islam will give you reward. That when you, you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Balaga Anni Wulo Ayah. You know, so basically, you know, set, relate some knowledge about me or about the religion, even if it's just one verse. That doesn't mean, though, very important point, and this is the last point I want to make, that does not mean like some of the groups and people who get together and use this evidence to say, so they believe in just going, making dawah everywhere and, the, and without knowledge. No, you must have knowledge to make dawah. You must have, you know, you can say the little bit that you know, but don't be go beyond the bounds. And do not uh, just start speaking about Islam without knowledge. You should study Islam. Al-Alm, Imam Bukhari said, Al-Alm, qabla al-qawli wal-amal. Did you say Imam Bukhari and I agree? What? Yeah. So Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the great scholars of hadith, in his book, he had a chapter called Knowledge Precedes Statements and Actions. Meaning that before you speak about something in Islam, and before you do something, you have to have knowledge about it. For example, let's give you a real world example, Muhammad Farah. If you want, if you want to do surgery, Muhammad Farah, can we ask you to do surgery for us? No, we can't. Why? Because he doesn't have knowledge of being a surgeon. He didn't go to school. He's not a physician. So if he does surgery on us, we could be in a lot of trouble. He might say, "Oh, let me take that part out and put something else there." And I, I you know, so I don't, I don't trust Muhammad Fadr like that. I love him. He's my brother, but I don't trust him to just cut me open. And that's the same way with your knowledge about Islam. You cannot go to just anybody just because they have a beard or just because they say he's a sheikh or they say he's this. No, you should know that, oh, so-and-so is trustworthy with knowledge. We, we know he studied the religion, he or she studied the religion, and they can share the knowledge. So I wanted to share with you, and those are some of the benefits of that hadith. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. I have two questions. Jazakallah khairan.